Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. And now it's my very special pleasure to, um, I guess, start a series of talks, the Mostovsky lectures here at Gdansk. So Mostovsky was, I'm probably the wrong person to talk about Mostovsky, but my understanding is he was uh, um, one of the most influential mathematicians of his time and certainly logicians here in Poland. Uh, he was born in Lviv um, and then moved to Warsaw, where he graduated in the year 39, a great time to be here. Um, sorry to say that. And he is one of the people who actually stayed here during the war and he built up a school and yeah, and you all know as much as I do about his mathematics. <clears throat> so honoring him, uh, we now have John Steele from Berkeley here to give us the first lecture. Um, so John works in the area of descriptive set theory. Uh, mostly he also did work in recursion theory or reverse mathematics, but mostly in uh, the area of descriptive set theory and inner model theory. Uh, he famously proved with Tony Martin projective determinacy from Woodin Cardinals. And um, he won a lot of prizes, the Carp Prize in 88. Um, he delivered the Gödel Lecture in 2012. He got the Hausdorff Medal of the European Set Theory Society in 2015, <laughs> right? And we are very happy to have him here now and, to, and talk about hot pair capturing. Okay, thanks, Ra. Uh, thanks to the organizers for uh, uh, making this conference run so smoothly, all the work they've done, uh, and for inviting me to give this first Mostowski lecture. I actually collaborated with Mostowski, it's a little known, but uh, in 1974, we were on the same team at uh, John Addison's treasure hunt in Berkeley. And uh, he wasn't running around much at that time, but we had a good time and our team did well. So it was a successful uh, collaboration. Uh, my talk is actually connected uh, through a long series and through many decades and the work of many people to Mostovsky's work. Uh, he was one of the founders of uh, hyper arithmetic theory. He and, uh, he and Martin Davis and Kleene uh, more or less independently uh, defined the arithmetic hierarchy and then the hyper arithmetic hierarchy and developed their basic properties. Uh, that led to Kleene's 1955 theorem that the hyperarithmetic sets are the same as the delta 1, 1 sets. Mostowski uh, was the first of those to recognize the connection with classical descriptive set theory. Uh, he didn't fully uh, get it at a technical level. Addison actually unified the two at a, at a technical level and called the new subject uh, effect of descriptive set theory. And this is, a, this is a beautiful theorem, that uh, Kleene's theorem, that uh, it, it provides a constructive analysis of uh, some form of second order definability. You construct from below something that you define from above. Uh, and it leads to a fine hierarchy for the delta one one reals. If you see a theorem like that, you just can't help but ask, can we go higher? Uh, and indeed we can. But in order to do that, uh, the basic concepts of recursion theory are no longer sufficient, and uh, those of inner model theory take their place. The, uh, the connection with inner model theory is you, know, you can rephrase the uh, hyperarithmetic sets as the uh, sets, the reals that belong to L sub omega 1 CK. Okay, that's a fairly direct translation, I think, due to perhaps to Takeuchi, I'm not quite sure, 
But uh, so you can rephrase the, the theorem in set theoretic language this way, and then, uh, then you can go further uh, and higher. So Solovey and Schoenfield uh, putting their work together in, in the, uh, I think it's the late 60s, showed that the reals in L are precisely those which are delta 1, 2 in the countable ordinal, <laughs> meaning delta 1, 2 in every code of that ordinal. Uh, there's a period of about 20 years when people struggled their way through the delta 1, 3 reals. Ultimately, uh, uh, this theorem, theorem C there was proved that the reals in MN, MN being the minimal intermodel, canonical intermodel with N wooden cardinals, uh, are precisely those that are delta 1, N plus 2 in the countable ordinal. So for N equals 0, M0 is L. That's the special case. M1 took a, took a while to get to M1, but we did. Uh, and then uh, going still higher, the reals in M omega, which is the minimal canonical intermodel with omega wooden cardinals, are just those which are ordinal definable in L of R. So we've captured a fragment of ordinal definability, a sort of second order notion, by building up from above. Uh, sorry, building up from below. Okay, now uh, items C and D require large cardinal hypotheses, uh, and uh, that they just require them. That is, uh, if w without them, uh, definability at these levels is not generically absolute. So you, you're not, you can't pin it down. There's no, you're not going to be able to produ produce a constructive analysis of something that can be varied by set forcing. Okay, so let's look at generic absoluteness, which is the sort of the quality of the uh, truth that we're trying to reach. Uh, there are many results uh, uh, at levels between and, and beyond the ones that I indicated in the previous slides. What they, what they have in common is uh, they, they give you a constructive analysis of generically absolute truth that uh, sufficiently that captures what we're after. Uh, this constructive analysis leads to a fine hierarchy with condensation properties. At higher levels, large cardinal hypotheses play an essential role, both in proving the generic absoluteness and in uh, giving us the markers in the constructive analysis that uh, we want to provide for it. Okay, so let's uh, expand on generic absoluteness. Uh, fortunately, Sandra and Yoko both defined the universally bare sets. I'll give you yet another definition. Uh, they're all equivalent, of course. Uh, so if A is a set of reals by which I always mean member of the bare space, A is universally bare if and only if for every uh, kappa, there's a pair consisting of a formula phi and parameter A, such that whenever M is countable and transitive and pi maps uh, M into V elementarily, sending kappa bar A bar to kappa and A, uh, and G is M generic uh, for a post set of size less than kappa bar, and X is a real in MG, then X is in A if and only if MG satisfies phi of X and A. Uh, the standard way of putting this is there are club many phi A generically correct hulls of V. Uh, it follows the, the more natural thing you might say, just uh, why not just have a formula and a parameter which defines the same set of reals in all generic extensions. That is, the set of reals it defines in any two generic extensions are compatible with one another and extend our ground model set. That's not quite enough uh, because you can make random noise generically absolute by class forcing. So, okay, so we don't, that's, that's something we don't want. There's an element of condensation in this definition. The definition has to condense to countable sets in a way that's absolute. Uh, 
So th this is the correct definition for universally barren. It's equivalent to the absolutely complementing trees and uh, the topological definitions. OK, so that's the kind of truth we want to capture by our constructive analysis. Uh, large cardinals come into the picture the following way. It's a uh, definition uh, comes out of work of Tony Martin, uh, isolated explicitly by him and Kakris. So uh, we say a set A of reals is, homo is infinity homogeneous. Uh, if membership in A is continuously reducible to well-foundedness of direct limit systems. Uh, more uh, precisely, uh, there's a system of models M sub S and uh, embeddings I sub S T index by finite sequences S and T, such that the base, uh, the root model is V. Uh, each M sub S is closed under kappa sequences. If S is contained, extended by T, then uh, I sub S T maps M sub S into M T. Uh, the, uh, if S is contained in T and contained in U, then uh, the I sub S U is the composition of the two. Uh, and finally, X is in our set A, if and only if the direct limit along X uh, under these embeddings of the M sub S is uh, well-founded. Okay, so Martin showed in 68 that all home infinity sets are determined. That was his, part of his proof of pi 1 1 determinacy. Uh, Martin Solovey showed that uh, all home infinity sets are universally bare. Okay, uh, the, the uh, converse that's proved in 85, uh, if they're arbitrarily, and it needs the large cardinals. Uh, if they're arbitrarily large wooden cardinals, then every Hom infinity set is universally bare. Uh, if gamma is any bold-faced point class, that is collection of sets of reals closed under continuous pre-images, uh, then uh, the sets of reals constructible from gamma in the reals are, are a proper uh, initial segment of the uh, Hom infinity sets. That's part one, and uh, this model L of gamma and R satisfies AD, in fact, something called AD plus, and uh, V equals L of P of R. Uh, I said initial segment of Hom infinity. Well, that's because of the next theorem. Uh, assuming AD, the family of uh, self-dual <laughs> I guess there's a redundancy. Self-dual both bold-faced point classes, self-dual means they're closed under complements, um, is well-ordered under inclusion. So there's a real hierarchy here, the well-ordering of complexity classes, these, these self-dual point classes. Uh, and for any proper cut in, in Hom infinity, you get a model of AD plus and V equals L of P of R. So we could take generically absolute truth in our uh, in our grand slogan to be truth in some L gamma of R for gamma proper cut in Hom infinity. And uh, there's a naturally a natural hierarchy on these gammas. So that's the hierarchy we want to climb. Uh, it's called the wage hierarchy. It's a very fine hierarchy. Uh, now, these, you're not going to be able to construct these L, gammas, L of gamma and R in any constructive process because all the reals are in that model and you can't constructively well order the reals. But truth in L gamma of R is reducible to truth in its HOD. Uh, that's a, a theorem of Wooden from the 80s, assuming AD plus and V equals L of P of R. V is elementarily embeddable into a symmetric inner model of a generic extension of HOD. So by the homogeneity or the symmetry, truth in L gamma of R is reducible to truth in its HOD. Okay. And of course, truth in HOD is reducible to truth in L gamma of R. So the, the, the true are equivalent, two are uh, equivalent. Okay, so 
But HOD has a definable well order. We can hope to construct HOD from below. I mean, we haven't defined it that way. It's it's defined just using truth and L gamma of R, carved it out from above. But but perhaps we can construct it from below and sort of understand it thoroughly. So that uh, that leads us then to the our grand program of constructively analyzing generically absolute absolute truth has come down to uh, analyze HOD in models of determinacy. Now you might think we've we've sort of given something up. We've gone into a model of determinacy. We haven't said anything about how it came from home infinity or generically absolute definitions in V. But in fact, uh, there's a, a theorem of Wooden that shows that every model of AD plus and V equals LP of R looks like it came from a, a uh, uh, looks like the HOD in a model of, uh, sorry, looks like the HOD in an L gamma of, uh, L of gamma and R. Okay, so we we really haven't lost anything by working at AD plus and L of V equals L of P of R. Okay, so there's our promise uh, problem. I should say this problem uh, predates a lot of the motivation I have given from intermodel theory. It, it really sort of came into its own in the uh, uh, late 70s, early 80s. And uh, it was work of uh, Martin Moskovakis and other Kabbalists that that uh, first brought this for, uh, problem to the fore. So they were working simply under determinacy and trying to analyze the HOD of uh, their model of determinacy. The tools of intermodel theory hadn't really gotten, we didn't know about intermodels with wooden cardinals at that point, so they hadn't gotten to the point where they could be used in any serious way. OK, there are two uh, two conjectures which sort of summarize what we would like to know. Uh, uh, first, assume AD plus and V equals L of P of R, then HOD satisfies GCH. So I shouldn't say that they summarize what they, we would like to know. If we could answer these problems, most likely we would thoroughly understand HOD. That is, it's, high, it's highly unlikely given what we know now, that we're going to be able to prove GCH and HOD without a thoroughgoing fine structure for it. Okay, there are special cases of it. The CH has been proved already. There's other special cases that you can do by sort of coarse descriptive set theoretic methods, but to get the GCH and other things like squares and diamonds and, and all of the fine structure uh, you, you, but just to get the GCH, you'll probably have to do a, a, a thoroughgoing fine structural analysis. Uh, the other conjecture is that these HODs reach very, very all the way in the consistency strength hierarchy. One way to say that is that uh, there is some model of AD plus and V equals L of P of R such that HOD of M is satisfies there's a huge cardinal. We're pretty far from getting to that insane level right now, but uh, uh, someday it should be proved. Uh, another thing to say about conjecture one is it's it's uh, both conjectures. They belong to intermodel theory. We know that now that uh, the methods of intermodel theory can be used to analyze HODs for a fairly good initial segment of the uh, wage hierarchy of home infinity and. Uh, there's every reason to believe it will go all the way. Conjecture one uh, means that we'll need some general notion of mouse that works in all of the L gammas and, uh, and R's. So uh, to date, our notions, uh, uh, so I, I'll, I'll say more about what a mouse is, but a mouse is a, a approximation to, the, to HOD. Uh, and uh, to date, our, our notions of mouse uh, are always limited in such a way that they're not, they, they couldn't be sufficient to analyze all the HODs. But there must be a general one. 
because that theorem has that conjecture has to be provable. And the only way it's going to be provable is if that general notion is defined and the theorem is proved using it. Okay, so um, the goal now, my goal now is to explain uh, what we know about analyzing HOD, what a, what a mouse is, uh, and all the, the different concepts that uh, go into that. I have to do it in a pretty uh, sloppy general way. I hope that you will take these uh, pseudo definitions uh, in, in the way that they're intended and are useful to you. That is, I hope to give you some ideas, but I can't give you thoroughgoing definitions. Okay, so to begin with, uh, uh, an extender over E over a model M is a system of measures on M that codes an elementary embedding from M into its something called the ultra power by the extender. Large cardinal hypothesis assert the existence of elementary embeddings. Extenders are uh, a way of representing elementary embeddings in such a way that you can build an inner model from them. Okay. Uh, we say an extender is short if all its component measures concentrate on the critical point. Uh, short extenders can capture large cardinals properties up to, up to something called sub, sub compactness. So quite strong large cardinal properties, but not at the level of super compactness, uh, which requires long extenders. Our Currently, we have uh, only a, a limited understanding of inner models built from long extenders, very limited one. That's probably the main missing ingredient in our general notion of mouse. We don't understand how to put long extenders into mice in a way that we can analyze the resulting structure. So the restriction to short extenders is an important one, it prevents us from getting to super compactness. It's, it's a great deficiency in our current understanding. Okay, now, uh, uh, so the the structures we'll be look, looking at will be built from sequences of extenders. Uh, and uh, what we want to do with those structures is form ultra powers by the extenders. We want to do this repeatedly, so that's leads to iterated ultra powers. These iterations will actually take place in a tree structure. Uh, so that's an iteration tree. Uh, in, in an iteration tree, you have uh, embeddings, a direct limit system along each branch. And the, the successor step is you take an extender from your current model and you apply it to perhaps to the current model, but perhaps to some earlier model. Uh, and that's what leads to the tree structure uh, and form an ultra power of, of the model to which you're applying it. That's your next current model. At limit steps, uh, you need to continue by picking a branch that's been visited cofinally often and taking the direct limit along that branch. So that's what an iteration tree is. Uh, a tree is called normal uh, if the extenders that are used in it have increasing strengths. The strength of the extender is how much its ultra power agrees with the model that you're taking the ultra power of. And they're all applied to their uh, longest possible initial segment of the earliest possible model. Okay, a stack of iteration trees is uh, just what's in the picture. You form an iteration tree on the base model. You go to the last model of the tree form another iteration tree on it, last model of that, and continue. Uh, we only need to talk about finite stacks here, I believe. Okay, so there's a little picture for the iteration tree, a uh, stack of iteration trees. Okay, an iteration strategy is a method of picking those branches at limit ordinals. So it's a function that's defined on M stacks, that stacks on the model M, uh, that are that are according to the strategy already, whose last tree has limit length. And what it does is pick a cofinal branch 
of that tree uh, such that the direct limit along that branch is well-founded. So basically, we want to be able to stay in the category of well-founded models uh, as we blow up the model that we've got. Our base model gets blown up along each branch. Uh, we want to have a way at limit ordinals of continuing the process so that we stay in the category of well-founded models. That's an iteration strategy. That's what converts uh, a attempted mouse uh, an approximation, attempted approximation to hot into a good one. The existence of an iteration strategy. Okay, if S is a stack by sigma with last model P, then the tail strategy sigma sub S is given by, uh, well, take a stack T on the last model, sigma sub S of T is sigma of S followed by T. Uh, another operation on strategies you want to consider is pullbacks. If pi maps M into N elementarily and sigma is an iteration strategy for N, then sigma super pi is the pullback strategy given by uh, sigma super pi is sigma of the pi lift of S. So if you've got a stack on S, you can lift it using the map pi to a stack on N, use your strategy for N to pick branches and then pull those back to the tree on in. Okay, so that's the pullback strategy. So there's a little picture of lifting a tree on M. Uh, each model on the tree on M gets embedded to a, a, uh, a uh, the corresponding model of the tree on N and then at limit steps you choose the branch that pulls back the branch on, on, on N. Okay, finally, uh, uh, we, we need to, we need some statement that limits us to the realm where short extenders are relevant, or are or, or, or adequate rather. Okay, so no long extenders is the assertion that there's no countable, iterable, pure extender mouse. Uh, I'll say a few more, more words about what a mouse is. It's structure constructed from a sequence of extenders in a certain way. Uh, okay, so there's no uh, countable, iterable, pure extender mouse with a long extender on its sequence. So no long extenders means we're not in the realm where we need long extenders to analyze HOD. Okay, we haven't reached that high yet. Okay, so uh, here are two theorems that uh, say that uh, under uh, a hypothesis on the existence of uh, iteration strategies, we can solve our problems. Okay, so assume AD plus and suppose there's a countable pure extender mouse with a long extender on its sequence, then for any point class gamma such that L of gamma and R satisfies, there is no such mouse. So if as long as we're below that iteration strategy, uh, hot of L gamma and R satisfies GCH. And in fact, it has a very thorough fine structure. Uh, the second theorem tells us that we can, we re can reach appreciable large cardinals this way. Uh, suppose that V is uniquely iterable which means that has uh, that this <laughs> the iter it has an iteration strategy, and that strategy is pick the unique branch such that the direct limit is well founded. Okay, so it's iterable by the strategy of picking unique branches with the direct limit well founded. Uh, and suppose you have a one extendable cardinal kappa, then there's a point cast class gamma such that L of gamma and R satisfies AD, in fact, ADR, uh, and HOD of L gamma R satisfies there's a subcompact to cardinal. So basically we can reach as far as the short extenders let us reach. Uh, that is subcompact cardinals. Now the proofs of these theorem go by isolating the notion of a mouse pair. So it's a mouse paired with an iteration strategy and uh, certain relations between them. 
uh, and proving a general comparison theorem for it for these objects. So that's the main el new element in the proofs of these theorems, it's the comparison process for these mouse pairs. Uh, both of them have an iterability hypothesis built in. And number one is the existence of that iterable mouse with a long extender. Number two is the unique iterability of V. Okay, so this these two theorems that prove modulo the existence of iteration strategies. The existence of iteration strategies is the big open problem, it has been the big open problem. It's been partially solved at lower levels. The general solution, even in the short extender realm, still eludes us. It's the big open problem. Uh, the form of the problem that we're going to be, I'm trying to bring out really, is uh, called hot pair capturing. So hot pair, the title is, uh, basically, uh, the name of our conjecture that there are those iteration strategies in the short uh, extender realm. Okay, so, uh, but modulo the existence of iteration strategies, mouse pairs can be used to analyze HOD. So I want to say uh, something about how that works. Uh, Okay, before we go a little further, uh, let me say you can find precise, if, if you're interested, uh, you can find precise definitions and theorems, proofs uh, in this book. Uh, you can get it at a 25% discount if, if you uh, go through the ASL, which given the price is probably definitely worth it. Uh, I tried to make the book as accessible as possible to someone with a sort of intermediate level knowledge of inter, uh, intermodel theory. Uh, there's an in essay at the beginning you could read without such knowledge, at least for part of the essay. Okay. Okay, so let, let's go uh, on with some uh, uh, rough definitions of concepts. Uh, a pure extender pre-mouse is a structure that's consisted from a con constructed from a coherent sequence of extenders. Uh, coherent means that the extenders are added in order of their strength, that is how big their ultra powers are, uh, without any le leaving any gaps in strength. Okay, that's the rough meaning of it, and there's a precise definition. Uh, okay. A least branch pre-mouse, uh, these pure extender pre-mice, they're not approximations to HOD, they're missing some information. The information that is missing is how to iterate them. A least branch pre-mouse, not only does it have an iteration strategy, but it incorporates the iteration strategy that it knows about its own iteration strategy to a certain extent. So least branch pre-mouse is a structure constructed from a coherent sequence of extenders and a predicate for an iteration strategy. Uh, we, uh, these, these M's have a hierarchy and, and a fine structure. So the fine structure like that for L. Uh, and uh, the extenders are indexed and in, uh, you have your, there are various choices about how to index the extenders. They're intertranslatable with one another. I was using Jensen indexing. Okay, uh, it's called least branch pre-mouse because at certain straight stages, the, it's called the strategy active stages, we tell the mouse, and we tell M the value of uh, this strategy that we're supposed to be telling it on the least tree such that we haven't yet told it. So as M is built, it, it can form, it can see iteration trees on itself. And in a systematic way, we're telling it what the correct branches for those trees are. Let's take the least tree that we haven't done it yet and, and then tell it. Okay, so now a uh, mouse pair, which is the fundamental notion. Uh, a mouse pair is a pair 
P sigma. Uh, P is a countable pre-mouse, either pure extender or least branch. Uh, you do want to consider pre-mice of other sizes, but in the context of AD, uh, the countable ones are the most important ones. So I'm just restricting it uh, to countable ones at this point. Uh, Sigma is an iteration strategy that's defined on all countable stacks on P. Sigma has certain regularity properties listed in number three, which I don't want to explain. Basically, they're self-consistency properties of the strategy. Uh, 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 maybe strong hull condensation is the one to talk about. Uh, uh, if you have an iteration tree that's according to your strategy and you take a skolem hull of it, that's also according to the strategy. So it's a condensation property of the strategy. And you, have, you, know, you need to spell out exactly how elementary that skolem hull is. And that uh, takes some work, but you could do that. Uh, and then finally, uh, if P is a least branch pre-mouse, we want to say that the strategy we've been telling it is this strategy sigma. So that's it, its inter internal strategy predicate is consistent with the iteration strategy that's part of the pair. And that's what four says, it's called push forward consistency. Whenever you have a Q that's a sigma iterative P via some stack S, then the strategy predicate of Q is the tail strategy, uh, sigma sub S. Okay, so that's a mouse pair. And these are, uh, I would say, these are the fundamental regularity properties. That is, from these, you can drive all the other ones. And these properties are byproducts of the constructions that we have of iteration strategies. So they axiomatize the properties that you get from a construction in a way that you can then go on to derive all the other properties. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me uh, go through a few elementary properties of these mouse pairs. Uh, Let's say that an embedding pi, uh, we say that pi from P sigma into Q psi is an elementary embedding. If pi is uh, uh, a elementary embedding from P to Q, I should say there's always a certain, it's fine structure. So you have to consider uh, elementarity at each level of the Levy hierarchy. Uh, a, a convention that uh, is useful here is we assume that every pre-mouse has a distinguished degree of elementarity that you're considering it at. That's that K of P. Uh, and so uh, uh, we demand that pi be sigma K elementary, roughly, uh, where K is the K of P. And on sigma, we demand the sigma be the pullback of, uh, of psi. So to, to embed a strategy into uh, to embed sigma into psi is to be the uh, for sigma to be the pi pullback. Okay, so that's an elementary embedding on the category of mouse pairs. You can show that every elementary submodel of a mouse pair is a mouse pair. Uh, for strategies, for the strategy part, that means that those regularity properties of the strategy are preserved under pullbacks which is uh, some diagram chasing, which is like diagram chasing, by the way, is one of the main things that all, all of this, that you do throughout all of this uh, theory, chase diagrams. Uh, okay, so you chase the right diagrams and you can show that uh, the properties we uh, indicated uh, earlier are preserved under pullbacks. Uh, okay. Uh, Another elementary definition, we say that Q psi is an iterate of P sigma. If there's a stack S by sigma with last model Q and psi is the tail strategy sigma S. So iterate P to Q by S, replace sigma by the tail strategy, that's, that's an iterate of P sigma. 
Okay, you can show that the iteration maps are elementary. Uh, the new element there is that uh, that uh, the strategy sigma pulls back from its tails under the iteration maps, pulls back to itself from uh, under its own iteration maps. Okay, that property is called pullback consistency. Uh, this leads to a statement of what's called the Dodd Jensen lemma, which is a fundamental lemma in intermodal theory. Uh, the and it, the iteration map, the sigma iteration map from p sigma into cube psi is the pointwise minimal elementary embedding of p sigma into cube psi. So you can characterize the iteration maps as uh, the minimal ones in a certain sense. Okay. Uh, I want to remark that uh, so the Dodd Jensen lemma goes way back to Dodd and Jensen, uh, but it, it was not stated for mouse pairs, it was stated for mice. But if you try to state it for mice, uh, it's not true in general. Uh, what you need, uh, I mean, the form of it that was stated before was that uh, assuming there are unique iteration strategies for the mice, and then of course, the pullback strategy has it has to pull back because there's only one strategy for it, and the pullback strategy is a strategy. Okay, so pullback consistency is automatic if there are unique iteration strategies, but we don't want to assume there are unique iteration strategies. Once you get to mice with wooden cardinals, they don't have unique iteration strategies. Uh, so uh, the concept of mouse pairs what lets us state the Dodd Jensen lemma in its proper generality. You really want elementarity in the category of mouse pairs, not in the category of mice. Okay. Oh, whoops, I went the wrong way. Okay. Okay, so uh, the main result is comparison for mouse pairs. Uh, if you have sum AD plus and let P sigma and Q psi be mouse pairs of the same type, such that P and Q are countable, then they have a common iterate uh, R phi, such that R is countable, and uh, at least on at least one of the two branches, P to R or, or Q to R, uh, you don't drop to a proper initial segment of the hierarchy in your mouse. So uh, you have that on, on that side, you have an elementary embedding from your you know, uh, say on P to R doesn't drop, then we have an elementary embedding from P to R, and R is an initial segment of an iterate of Q. So that means that P has been shown to be weaker than Q, or rather P sigma has been shown to be weaker than Q psi. Whoops. Okay, that leads to a mouse order. Uh, P sigma less than or equal to star cube psi if and only if P sigma embeds elementarity elementarily into some iterate of Q psi. Uh, so what the comparison lemma shows is that uh, that order is connected. P one is less than or equal to the other. The Dodd Jensen lemma shows that it's well founded. Uh, and uh, so it's a pre well order. Uh, so the, the, the mouse order on mouse pairs of a fixed type that is either the pure extender type or the least branch pre mouse type uh, is a pre well order. And again, there's on mice, there is no mouse order. Uh, how two mice compare can depend on which iteration strategies you use to compare them. Okay, so you really want to compare all the data, you need to compare the pairs. And then you get an honest pre well order. Okay. And if we're in a model of 80 plus, it's basically uh, it's, it's somewhat coarser than, uh, but close to the wage order. So uh, if P sigma turned out to be weaker than Q psi, then, well, a strategy is a subset of HC, so it's essentially a set of reals. That 
sigma then is projective in psi. So the weaker strategy is essentially uh, wage below the uh, stronger. The weaker pair is essentially wage below the stronger one. So there, there, there's a, client, a hierarchy that's consistent with the wage hierarchy. Okay, uh, one can go on and uh, prove a comparison theorem where I think it was comparing families of mice, those are called phalanx comparisons that's needed in order to develop the basic fine structure. Let me not dwell on that. Uh, this tells us that uh, so there's a standard attempt to construct mouse pairs. Uh, again, assuming AD plus. Uh, let me not go into it. Uh, uh, it, in some sense, it goes all the way back to Solovey's construction of, of uh, uh, his proof that aleph one is measurable. Solovey constructed a model, an inner model with a measurable cardinal, uh, assuming AD, back in 1966 or seven, uh, and that. Construction was built on over the years. Uh, wooden uh, uh, proves a def definitive theorem in L of R, uh, and well, and more generally, uh, under AD plus, uh, that uh, gives you things that are very much like uh, mice, uh, but uh, uh, don't have the. They're not completely analyzed from below. So they're not they're not going to give us uh, approximations to Hod, but they're on the way. Uh, and then uh, within such an object, one of these coarse gamma wooden models, uh, one can do a one can attempt to construct mouse pairs. There's a natural construction. And what this comparison lemma and its extensions to phalanxes does for you is show that that construction doesn't break down. That is, the objects that you construct all have a fine structure. Okay, what we don't know is that it reaches uh, uh, the complexity of gamma, basically, in 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 that statement. We like that our if we do this construction in a gamma wooden model, you reach an iteration strategy for a hot pair that's roughly at the level gamma. And that's what's missing. OK, uh, a parallel theorem, if we start with this hypothesis about unique iterability of V and arbitrarily large wooden cardinals, uh, then the hot pair construction of V does not break down. Uh, OK. And there we do reach uh, whatever large cardinals we had in V. OK, uh, there are other things that one can uh, prove, but let me not uh, go on, uh, go into them. So let's state hot pair capturing more precisely. Uh, so least branch hod pairs can be used to uh, analyze hod. They give you a hierarchy for hod. I may get a chance to say why in a little bit, uh, but provided that there are enough of them. So what does enough of them mean? Uh, well, that's the content of hod pair capturing. Hod pair capturing or HPC is the statement uh, for every Suslin co Suslin set of reals, A, there's a least branch hod pair P sigma uh, such that A is definable over HC uh, with sigma as a predicate. So A is projective in sigma. OK. Uh, HPC is essentially uh, it show, it showed up in Grigor Sargsyan's work uh, as uh, generation of full point classes. So it's essentially the same thing. Uh, it's just that the notion of hod pair uh, is more general. It's, it's this notion that I pseudo defined earlier. OK, and, and one that should be sufficiently general to analyze hard in the short extender realm. Uh, 
under 80 plus, if P sigma is a mouse pair, then it's uh, code set, the set of reals coding it is both susulin and cosusulin. So the hypothesis that we're capturing susulin and cosusulin sets is necessary, that the sets we capture are susulin and cosusulin. If you're in a model of ADR, every set is susulin and cosusulin. So this is not a real important limitation. Uh, and there are other senses of capturing uh, that, uh, so HPC implies that every susulin cosusulin set of reals is in the derived model of some hod pair. That is, the hod pair can, uh, I mean, I, I, I sort of talked about the derived model earlier when I said that uh, V is a symmetric extension of its hod if we're in the AD plus world. That's the, because V is a derived model of hod. So hod can see V as a symmetric extension. That's, that's true in this local sense. Uh, HPC implies that for any set of reals that's susulin cosusulin, there's a hod pair which sees it in, in a symmetric extension of itself. So it, it's, its theory is captured by the hod. It's not just that it, it's the complexity of the strategy is at least A, it's that the pair can see A. Okay. Okay, so uh, how is this related to our uh, an analysis of HOD? Uh, assuming AD plus and, that, uh, and, and assume that there's an iterable pre-mouse with a long extender, let gamma uh, be a point class which doesn't yet see an iteration strategy for a long extender. Uh, then L of gamma and R satisfies HPC. So hot pair capturing does hold. Uh, if we have this iterabil iterability uh, assumption on the outside, that there's that there's uh, iteration strategy for a mouse with a long extender. The iteration strategy with the long extender way up high and home infinity, everywhere below it, uh, HPC holds. Everywhere below the least one of those, HPC holds. Okay. So in light of this, the following is almost certainly true. AD plus together with no long extenders implies hot pair capturing. We don't need that strategy. We can just work locally in the model of AD plus. As long as we haven't reached a long extender, we have enough hot pairs to analyze hot. That's what this conjecture says. And it's the big missing piece. Uh, we can prove it in certain uh, initial segments of the gammas, uh, up to ADR plus theta regular uh, by Sargsian's thesis. Uh, uh, here's a, a extension of that from uh, just recently, or pseudo recently. Uh, assuming AD plus and hod pair capturing fails, then there must be uh, pretty complicated hot pairs. So there's there's a P sigma such that P satisfies ZFC and there's a strong cardinal with a wooden above it. Uh, Grigor in work in progress has strengthened this to P satisfies there's a wooden limit of wooden cardinals. And that's roughly, I don't know, maybe precisely where we can go at the moment in terms of uh, proving hot pair capturing. We can prove it up to where you get iteration strategies for wooden limits of wooden cardinals. Give me a few minutes. Okay, so I, I won't say anything about the proof of it. I, what I wanted to, I wanted to conclude, here's something about how you analyze hot as a mouse uh, using these hot pairs, but let's skip that, skip all this. Okay, so, okay. Uh, we're stuck at wooden limits of woodens. Well, but that's what? That's some technical level. I mean, you got to wooden cardinals, you couldn't get past wooden limits of wooden cardinals. Uh, uh, seems, well, the, we should have more respect for wooden limits of wooden cardinals, I think is the moral of this last part. Uh, they have determined, you know, in large cardinal terms, you wouldn't think of this as being very important. Actually, in large cardinals terms, you wouldn't have thought of wooden cardinals being that important. Uh, determinacy is what really brings it out uh, and, and uh, semi-proper forcing. But, but uh, you know, those are fairly deep applications. You wouldn't have, at first, you wouldn't have thought of it, uh, wooden cardinals as being particularly important. 
Uh, and you know, wooden limits are in a somewhat similar position. That they actually have a, a lot of juice to them when you start looking closely. Uh, and so this last bit is uh, a collection of ways that they're actually stronger than you might think. Uh, so one is the, a couple of uh, old things. Uh, suppose there's a wooden limit of woodens with a measurable above it. Then there's an inner model of ZFC in which all games on the reels of length omega one with OD from a real payoff are determined. That's an awful lot of determinacy, games of length omega one. Uh, the, the precise consistency strength uh, shows up in this uh, theorem, uh, Sargsyan and Wooden in around 2010. A uh, wooden limit of woodens is equally consistent with uh, models of AD that contain all the reels, each of them, but uh, there's a set of reels A in the first model and B in the second model that are wage incomparable. So divergent models of AD, okay? So if one of them is sort of is along the standard path through hum infinity, it, it's somewhat hard to identify what that that A is where the divergence happened because there's an imposter B that also could have fit there in in, in its own non-standard wage hierarchy. Okay, so you get divergent models from. Uh, let me skip over this one. Uh, this is determinacy from hot pairs with wooden limits and uh, uh, conclude with uh, some recent results of Gapo and Sargent, uh, and relatives of which were proved earlier by wooden by different methods. Uh, so suppose they're arbitrarily large wooden cardinals uh, and that there's a hot pair P sigma, such that P is countable, sigma is coded by a UB set, and P satisfies uh, ZFC plus there's a wooden limit of wooden cardinals. So we have a hod pair with a wooden limit of wooden cardinals, basically. Then the Chang model satisfies AD. L of the omega sequence of ordinals satisfies AD. So there you have a sort of global theorem about all of V, uh, all the omega sequences can be put in there. I think all the reals are there. Uh, and the model is civilized. It's, it satisfies AD, okay? Uh, I mean, you, you don't get a well order of the reals in there, for example, okay? Uh, uh, you can also add the uh, club filters uh, and they become ultra filters. Uh, this is a some small embellishment of their proof. If you assume they're arbitrarily large wooden cardinals, and there's a hot pair of P sigma, such as P is countable, sigma is coded by a UB set, and P satisfies now a measurable wooden cardinal, which is stronger, uh, then uh, L of the omega sequences from the ordinals and this uh, club filter predicate uh, satisfies ADR, in fact. Uh, and it, all those filters, when restricted to the model, become ultra filters. So, model in this corollary says omega one is X super compact for all sets X. Okay, so that's a pretty strong uh, determinacy theory. ADR and omega one is X super compact for all sets X. In particular, it's not a V equals L of P of R model. It has structure above P of R, these super compactness measures and all those omega sequences of ordinals. Okay. Uh, a few more remarks on on this. Uh, I don't see how to reduce the mount's existence in the second one below a measurable wooden. Both proofs lead heavily on the theory of hod mice and the proofs of approximations to HC that we have now. So the, these uh, these determinacy theorems they are related to our and they're obtained by methods that are related to uh, our attempts to prove HPC. You know, those methods have shown some strength in the hypothesis. Their failure has shown strength in the hypothesis. Uh, as I said, uh, Wooden found approximations to uh, 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 somewhat similar theorems using different methods. Uh, in the Gapo-Sargsian proof, the initial segments of the Chang model in question are, are 
realized as generalized drive models associated to the Hod pair. And finally, uh, what I think this adds up to, which I think people working in this area have the feeling that uh, the proof of HPC is going to require a better understanding of models of ADR plus V not equal to P of R. There, there are determinacy like struct, there's determinacy like structure beyond the sets of reals, the sets of sets of reals and objects of higher type. And that may well come into uh, proving HPC. Uh, so Sandra talked about uh, the UB power set of UB. That's that's a way of starting to get at the determinacy like structure uh, higher up. And uh, so either the understanding that structure is just going to be a byproduct of our proof of HPC or maybe it's involved. Uh, it's quite hard to say now. Uh, there's a whole nest of problems here that uh, I think uh, are ripe for more work. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> How's that? Measurable ones? Uh, okay, so what's evidence? What's evidence of consistency? Uh, like it's where, how do you get it? You use a, you use the hypothesis in an important way in uh, in different contexts and develop structure around it, and you don't get zero equals one. If that goes on for long enough, uh, you know, when, when, when has it ever turned out that some basic hypothesis like this could be used to develop a mathematical structure and, and yet, uh, uh, you know, okay. Measure, measurable woodens have been used in stronger things because super compacts have been used all over the place in forcing. Why didn't we see the, the uh, inconsistency in the thousands of pages that have been written about what you can force from super compacts? Uh, at the measurable wooden level, they're used by uh, a really great one is Etai's proof of uh, uh, length omega one closed uh, games determined. Okay, uh, so there, there are, uh, and that, that's from an iterable mouse with a measurable wooden, which uh, so you might ask, well, maybe measurable woodens are consistent, but there's no iteration strategy. Uh, but uh, no, because there's that connection that uh, makes it, I think, pretty unlikely that uh, you could have that sort of structure around the hypothesis and yet it just turns out to be illusory. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, there are questions you can ask. Uh, I mean, we, we do have models like that, uh, namely uh, and one of the earlier things I skipped over. Uh, uh, I mean, you just take any element of the Sol Solovey sequence in a model of AD and cut off the P of R at that point, P alpha of R, and look at Hod of P alpha of R, okay? All you get, the, the sets of reals are just P alpha of R, just that wage cut, and then you have the HOD above that. Okay, that's not the sort of model I'm talking about, because that's well-ordered modulo, well-ordering P of R. Okay, types of models, things like the Chang model, they're not well-ordered by, you know, well-ordering P of R doesn't well-order the model. Okay, they, uh, they, hopefully there are such models which have true determinacy-like structure, that is some kind of, Determinacy for games played uh, where, where now you're playing sets of reels or objects of higher type. Well, the super compactness measures are a little like that. That's that's a kind of determinacy. Uh, but uh, it's Suslin, you know, generalized Suslin representations is a whole set of questions you could ask about trying to lift the determinacy theory we have of sets of reels up to sets of sets of reels and beyond. So 
the, the, the possibility is that that kind of structure, uh, that's the determinacy counterpart of the hod mice that we're trying to construct. And really, you you got to climb the two hierarchies simultaneously. So. So coming back to wooden limits of woodens, could it be that there is a deeper reason that the you know, one of the theory has such a problem to go significantly past that point? I mean, could it be well, really go wrong there? Uh, well, yeah, so I, I listed the things I could, uh, uh, I had to skip one, uh, but uh, I listed the things that uh, you can get out of wooden limits of uh, woodens and are, are also hod pairs with wooden limits of woodens, which may actually, uh, uh, it's not clear to me on my personal knowledge that, uh, that uh, uh, the consistency of a wooden limit gives you the consistency of a hot pair with a wooden limit. So that hot 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 pairs with wooden limits as these structures that know how to iterate themselves, they they could be stronger. Uh, uh, yeah, so it could be that I mean I, I'm I'm sort of uh, the other other people think maybe they've proved uh, hot pairs with wooden limits are not much stronger. I don't think anybody thinks they prove hod pairs with measurable woodens are much are are not really strong. So that that would that would be some. If that turned out to be the case, that would be uh, uh, a, a reason that uh, we haven't got there yet. But it's hard to get to wooden limits actually if you if you're trying to do an analysis of this. Uh, so I think the most likely explanation of it is just a hard. Uh, Problem and uh, uh, there there are ways that we have to go forward, but they involve a lot of analysis of different things, and uh, you know it needs more time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.